It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. What person is not experiencing some form of transition, yet change is one aspect of life that many people resist and fear? It terrifies us. According to today's guest, Tama Keys, in this ever-shifting world, it has become crucial to internalize the skills needed to adapt when change occurs. Tama knows firsthand the fear and paralysis that accompanies drastic life changes. She's been featured in USA Today, as well as on ABC News, Oprah Radio, and other national media. She is the author of the book, Thriving Through Uncertainty, Moving Beyond Fear of the Unknown, and Making Change Work for You. Welcome, Tama. Thank you for joining us. I'm so glad to be here today. Thank you. So, Tama, what you experienced in your life, I think many people go through something similar. You went to Harvard, and mm-hmm. you struggled for years to become a partner in a law firm. Harvard Law School, no less. There you go, <laughs> Harvard Law, a little bit of an overachiever. A little then bit. you realized that this wasn't what you wanted after all of this time and effort that you put mm-hmm. in. And you've said to yourself, this isn't right for me. But before we get into that part of the story, I want to talk a little bit about you as a person. Were you always self-driven or were you living up to the expectations of others? Mm. Good question. <laughs> a little bit of both. I, I think I think really um, I was just a, a people pleaser and achiever and doing what my family said and driven out of fear, you know, because uh, the fear of you have to do the right thing. You have to uh, you have to perform. You have to get ahead, that kind of thing, instead of out of love and what I really wanted to do and who I really was. You know, and, and that so- was why I opened that way, Tema, because when I said that most people go through this, in one mm-hmm. form or another, we are living our lives for other people. Yes, yes. You know, and, th- and that's how that whole thing happened is like, you know, when I was young, and this is true of a lot of people, they know what they want. They know what they love. When I was younger, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to write. That was my biggest dream. But I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and mm-hmm. my family's Orthodox Jewish. And mm-hmm. I got, you know, you're going to write? You're going to stop. <laughs> You know, and so that was that, you know, and so I went off to law school and Harvard Law School and graduated with honors. I'm on partnership track. And I was so unhappy because, you know, you don't get to choose what you love. It chooses you. It's like just because I was achieving success and I had what everybody else said was successful and everybody, it looked great in the world. It didn't feel good. It felt empty and scary because it wasn't really my right life. And thank God a friend said to me, think about it. If you've been this successful doing something you don't love, what right. could you do with what you love? And that's mm-hmm. really that's really what woke me up. So that's what began my whole journey. I walked out of that career to really create the life I wanted. I think that's amazing advice. What could you do when you find mm-hmm. what you really love? So you figured out that this wasn't what you wanted to do, and, and somehow you mustered up the courage to go back to Brooklyn and say, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. Mm-hmm. How did the people around you react? The people who said you were going to starve. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was that wasn't a happy moment in uh, my family's history. Let's just put it that way. Of you know, people around you will say, and they mean well, but you know, a lot of times they will say negative things to you, or they'll give you advice. And I always teach my clients. I'm a I'm a career and success coach, and I always teach my clients. I never take advice from unhappy people. I never take advice from unhappy people and I never take advice from people who aren't living their dreams because people who are living their dreams are going to tell you to go for yours. 
when I started doing this work, Tama, someone actually said to me that I was making a fool of myself and that people <laughs> were laughing at me. And, you know, oh it, the interesting thing was this came out of nowhere. I was just a middle-aged mom. And mm-hmm. so I could see where someone may say it was crazy. But for the first time in my life, I didn't let fear stop me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't let those comments stop me. And do you mm-hmm. think that's the turning point for people? When they say, Absolutely. I'm not listening. Absolutely. You know, you get one life and you get to decide which voice inside yourself you listen to. And you have a voice that's going to tell you, you know, those other people are right and you're making a fool of yourself or you need to be practical. You, you know, you're too old. You're too young. You're, you're not thin enough. You don't make enough money. You're not educated. But whatever it tells you. And you'll think it's practicality. But if it doesn't make you feel good, it's not the right voice. And I want to teach you to listen to this other voice inside you that tells you you have your dreams for a reason there's a reason you're called to do this there's a reason you want to do this and yeah it may not happen right away Uh, i've been rejected five billion times i've had so many challenges i've had so many obstacles most people don't live the life of their dreams because they don't know how to handle the uncertainty part tima what do you advise to someone to help him or her find the direction of his or her life when they when they don't really know what they want to be doing Mm. you know first of all i think we always know what we want we really do we're just not listening to it and I think that's what happens to a lot of people is that they get a whisper or a nudge but they think well that's not that's ridiculous forget about career forget about what you're doing with your whole life we're not trying to figure it out we're trying to let it out moment by moment we're going to follow the breadcrumbs because in this moment in this instant there is something you know there is something you want to do and if you do something you love and you do something you want to do It's going to strengthen you. It's going to change your brain chemistry. You're going to feel different about yourself. So that's the first step is always do whatever is nudging to you right now in this moment. So, Tamma, from the title of this show, Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, you know that I believe in the power of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. What is your strategy to transform negative thoughts into positive ones? It's so important, again, to keep in mind that you might be listening to a negative thought, but you're calling it good judgment. You're calling it practicality. So I use a technique called the win list. And what it is is that you focus exclusively on what's working, what's moving in the right direction, what you are doing well. So every single day you write five or ten things every single day of you know, what's moving in the right direction, what, what happened, what you are doing well. And I'll give you an example. It's not just actions that you take because, like you said, you change your attitude, you change your life. It's about the thoughts that you change, right? So mm-hmm. on, on that win list, it might not just be that, well, you know, I spoke my truth to my husband. That's fantastic. You know, that's an action you took. But maybe it's even I thought about speaking my truth to my husband. Didn't do it yet. But I at least had the awareness in that moment. That would go on your win list because so many times we're not acknowledging and uh, really celebrating ourselves for for the growth that we are doing. And as you know, everything happens internally. I don't care what you do in the outside. I care what you're thinking. Because if you change your thoughts, you change the way that you're thinking about it, you'll change your actions, you'll change the way you show up. So the win list focuses on times you've changed your thinking, times you've thought about changing your thinking, that you got more conscious in the moment, which is amazing. So for the people that you work with who have done this strategy, who have created this list, what happens? What can people that do this expect to see? What really starts to happen is that you start to develop this inner love or this inner confidence or this other way of seeing your life because you're starting to focus on the things that are working. Those people who are actively engaged in practices of thriving will really start to experience everything in their life differently. It's not about changing the circumstances. It's not about putting off your life saying, well, when I get over here, I'll be okay. If this one thing happens, I'll be okay. If that thing happens, I'll be okay. What I want you to start having the experience of is thriving right now. Something's happening right now in your life right now. There's a gift right now, and I don't want people to miss it. I want them to have the tools to have this inner friendship, this inner love, this inner connection that everything changes. Emma, we've been talking about people making the choice 
to move through some type of transition. But what about people that are placed in a circumstance over which they have no control, such as death or divorce or illness or unemployment? What strategies do you offer to help people manage things when they feel like it's out of their control? You know, and, and that's a very good question because, um, it, it, you know, it's very hard when, we, you know, we're going through a, a transition like that where something we did not ask for, we did not want, you know, or seems really negative or really challenging. And I think the main, the main point that I'm making in this book is that you think that happiness or that thriving is really about the circumstances of your life, that if things are going well, then you're going to be happy. That's what we're taught, right? You know, that if, uh, if I have enough money, if I get the right diagnosis, if, if I don't get divorced, if I, you know, all of those things. But really what happiness comes down to, and there's studies for this, is your response to your life is your life. It's not so much about what's going on. It's who will you be in this situation? Can I choose from love instead of fear? The natural instinct is to push away. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be going through this. I don't want to be going through grief. I don't want to be going through anxiety. I don't want to be, you know, all of those things. We, we try to push away our lives. And I want people to stop in this moment and realize that it's not so much what's going on that's hurting you. It's your thoughts about what's going on. And what I would want you to do is to use any single circumstance that you're in and have this be a life that you choose. To choose where you are and to show up in love and to show up in grace. Because I promise you, sometimes that what's falling apart is actually what's falling together. That you're moving into a more expansive of experience and sometimes that expanse is just learning how strong you are and what a difference you make and what a difference your thoughts make so for me it's always about really taking the time uh, and practice to shift the way that you're seeing where you are the book is thriving through uncertainty moving beyond fear of the unknown and making change work for you if you'd like to learn more about tama and her work you can visit her website tamakeeves.com that's t-a-m-a K-I-E-V-E-S.com. Tama, in our final moments, what's the takeaway? What do you want to leave our listeners with? I guess the, I guess the main thing I would want people to know is uh, thriving can happen right here, right now. Let's not push our lives away. Let's not say, um, I just got to get through this. I just got to get through that. I want to I wanna teach you to thrive right now. I want you to start enjoying where you are. And I think the main thing I'd like you to know, too, is that the things that are uh, on your mind that, uh, you know, you think are frivolous or silly or, oh, I couldn't do that or I couldn't go after that or I couldn't, it's too late. I want you to know it's imperative. I want you to know that listening to your inner voice and your instincts and your genius and your gifts and your love is imperative. Tim, thank you so much for spending time with us today and for providing strategies that can help us move through fear, be more gentle with ourselves, thrive, and choose the life we want to live. So I'm happy that you made the choice because now you're here with us to help us make the choice. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much, and thank you for all the choices you're making and the courage you're doing to put these incredible messages in the world. Thank you. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. We believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read our digital magazine, take part in the book club, check out our team, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.